Uh, I'll let, I'll let you lead this one. Is that I have, the, that's I not who I was going to talk about. Oh, who are you going to talk about? I, I said my team I'm picking because I'm I'm very disappointed in the Atlanta Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> that's my team to bring up. Uh, we were also talking about them off stream a little bit, Bernie, you and I, in our other chat um, with our friend Josh, who's a big Atlanta Hawks fan. Um, I think they're so disappointing. Um, I, I just don't really understand much of what they do on a night in night out basis. And this is, this is just a little off tangent of them actually on the court, like their performance, but just their attitude. I don't think there's a team that has a worse attitude on a nightly basis than the Atlanta Hawks. There's no team that acts like they've done more without doing anything than the Atlanta Hawks. Mm -hmm. There's no team that trash talks when they have no right to trash talk as much as this team and have it blow up in their face in the moment than the Atlanta Hawks do. Uh, I like Nate McMillan, but I, I don't get it. I don't understand how you don't have Trey moving off ball more often. Don't understand anything with John Collins. I don't. I just don't like this team. And based on the move they made to go get DeJounte Murray, some of the success we've seen with the DeJounte Murray Trey Trey Young pairing so far, for it to be not good in the way it's been is a huge failing. It's been so bad considering what they gave up to get DeJounte and how far they've made it in certain runs in the playoffs in the past. Like they need to be better than this based on the trajectory that they've been on in recent years and the fact that you're making win-now moves. Going to get DeJounte Murray with three first-round picks is a win-now move. You're not winning at a higher rate than you have in the past few seasons. And there, there's a lot of people that would give them excuses in terms of, you know, Bogdanovich is just coming back. He looked awful in his first game. Um, Trey is hurt right now, I think. He didn't play the last couple games, I, I'm pretty sure just doesn't matter because even when Trey was there, it wasn't necessarily equating to like a very high end. This team is really competing and the, the beat the bucks twice this season. I get it. If I have to hear about that anymore, I'm going to tear my eyes out. All right. It doesn't matter. They cannot compete against the bucks when it matters because they don't do the things it takes to win at a high level on most occasions. I I don't know. I'm not a big Hawks fan. I shouldn't I be as disappointed not. in them right. as I am. I'm really disappointed because I think they're way better than they've played so far this season. And I could honestly see them having another midseason coaching change because Nate McMillan is it's not motivation that he gave them when he stepped in for Lloyd Pierce. It, it appears to have dried up because they do not play for him in the way that they should. And they are one of the laziest teams I watch most nights. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being extra harsh on them. I think you're being extra harsh, man. I, I think they're infuriating. Here, here's the I thing. Think, I think that checks out, honestly. You think that checks out? You think I'm on on something, Brad? Or I, what, what, Oh, yeah. I think you are. Mostly because yeah. Trey and DeJounte are like, you know, they're both super. It's, it's the nature of the game, but they're both really cocky players. And... It, they act like they've done something, but they haven't. So they don't take every game as serious as they should. Like that Rockets game, there's no way they should have lost that game, and that was extremely embarrassing. That's a per- I mean, that that is the that game. I already felt that way before that game, but that game exemplified all my feelings. Like that game, maybe the word is exacerbated all my feelings. I felt even stronger afterwards because that was like this is what this team does every night, but in the worst example of it and that if, if there's people out there that think that's the last time that's going to happen with this team you're crazy it's going to happen more times because that's who they are that's their attitude as a team is that they are those guys you can't play that way like it's bernie i would push back and say look at your team look at the celtics they don't have that mentality any night and they actually have been there and done things, but that's the reason they're so successful every night. Like that's it. So, mm-hmm. They go out and play hard every game. Couldn't they can't compete in a seven game series against any of the top four teams in the East? They can't do it. Yeah, I mean, my only thing that I'll say is that I think the reason why I think I'm going to push back with the devil's advocate. I'm gonna hit that hit that trap card. 
Um, it's just because I think there's been just a lot of injuries to this team. Like, you know, John Collins is now going to be out for two weeks. DeAndre Hunter is going to be like, he's a huge piece and, you know, huge factor into that rotation. And if he's not hurt there, every year, nah, I mean, he's not really hurt every year. I would say that this is kind of one of those, like, just, it, it's just unfortunate. And I just think that that's kind of where the Hawks are at right now. And when they don't have those pieces, their second unit is not as impressive as their first unit. They really are reliant heavily on their first unit to kind of set the tone and set the pace for the game. Um, and I think that that's kind of where the Hawks are at right now is that their role players are now in a position where they have to now be the the guy and they're just, they're not, they're not capable of it. And, you know, whether that's just the Hawks makeup in terms of, you know, getting like a guy like Bogdanovich to get back to healthy, um, whether that's Hunter getting back to healthy or whether they need to start moving John Collins every, every year, it seems like there's always a John Collins trade waiting to happen. Uh, for the Hawks. And so I'm not getting anything for him of value with that contract. <laughs> so, you know, I think the Hawks are going to have to stay the course and I think they will be where they were at, you know, maybe last year, the year before that, they just need to continue to, you know, just hold the fort. And I know that that's tough because Trey young hasn't been playing very well um, as of late, but I think that he'll get back on this track at some point and, you know, get them, get them going again. And, you know, DeJounte Murray too. I think DeJounte Murray is definitely has improved and I think the trade was worth it, Pete. And I know we'll probably get into like trades and all that. Agree. Stuff. I still think it's worth it. It's just you have to maximize it being worth it in the first place, you know? Like you have to capitalize on actually doing it. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'm you know, I think the Hawks, you know, we'll we'll see if they're uh willing to get better. That's the that's the big thing. Uh, I feel really like I think that's it right there, Bernie. The willingness to do it is the question. Yeah, I feel like every time they run into some adversity, they just kind of pin it on the coach. <laughs> like, I know Lloyd yeah. Pierce was rough, and Nate McMillan, you know, he needs to run Trey off the ball more, but there was a report about Nate and a player getting into an argument, and then apparently the team wants Nate fired or something like that. It's disgusting, man. So it's like, disgusting. Yeah. As if that's an excuse to act the way they act on the court and play the way they play. Like, it's not... It's not Nate McMillan's fault. It's, I mean, yeah, he's not, not a good Nate's coach. Fault. He's not a top end coach, but he is certainly not a bottom end coach either. He's not exactly. the reason they're thirteen and eleven. It's it's or thirteen and ten. It's just not that. I, yeah, he's he's an average coach at best. So like, it's definitely not his fault. I would say that. I mean, Bernie, the injuries might play some factor, but I think it's mostly their roster. Like. I think their roster is just way worse than it has been. They made a win now move for DeJounte Murray, but the rest of their guys are just they had Gallo last year who was helping them on offense. They had Lou Will last year. They had uh Kevin Herter who's, yeah, who's yep, been playing the best basketball of his life. Shooting the laces off the ball. From them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That means something. That means something. It, it does. Away, it's not like he uh grew six inches or anything or all of a sudden developed a shot. He could shoot before. He's exactly. just better. <laughs> and I think we would see the same thing from John Collins because the Hawks have been and this is on Nate McMillan, but I also think it's on Trey Young being unwilling to play off the ball. It's yeah. they use John Collins like he's Grant Williams. Stay in the corner, shoot threes, and then go play defense. Like he, that he's not that guy. He's not Grant Williams. You know, he can get rebounds. He has a little post move. You know, he's he's not the best on ball creator. As as Grant Williams, exactly. So you might as well use him like he's getting paid. Um, so yeah, they. I don't. They're, the whole team is messy because even with John in the starting lineup, he was playing terrible. <laughs> so I don't get it. He was. He was. He's awful, man. I mean that contract, and I. I don't even know if it's his fault at this point. He might be I one of the most confusing players <laughs> in the league because, like you said, I think he would be dramatically better in certain places. Mm -hmm. I, I. I just don't get it. I th there was a point think, where we thought he'd be an all star. He was a double double machine. Legitimately, yes. He looked like a one of the up and coming better young power forwards in the league. And now I would put him in one of the worst contracts in the league discussion, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um let's see here. Let's move on to another team that I feel like we should talk about who, you know, are somehow sneaking around and not really being mentioned, and that's the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chicago Bulls have been one of the most, I would say, most disappointing teams after last year's expectations of they were supposed to be the number one team. Like they were supposed to be in the top three, battling it out with the Celtics, with the Bucks, with the 76ers, all these teams in the East. But 
I understand injuries play a huge concern and, you know, my boy Lonzo, like it's looking, it's looking grim right now in terms of like how long the rehab has taken to get him back. It's awful. Um, but I just think like, you know, this is probably kind of the worst, I would say breakdown of a team that just got put together because, you know, we talk about Vucevic not, you know, obviously not living up to the expectations that he was supposed to live up to, you know, obviously with his magic numbers, they were obviously inflated. But also to me, it comes down to like, I understand, you know, I'm not going to pin it all on Zach Levine, but this is not a very good Zach Levine year so far. It's bad. Yeah. You know, 20, is, 23 a points a game, 5.7 assists, but shooting less than 40% from the field. Like that's just not going to win you basketball games. That is, that is going to lose you a lot of games. And when you're best player, I think what it really is, you guys, is that I, I think that he's just not interested in playing basketball for the Chicago Bulls right now. He just looks so I uninterested. Agree. So I mean, he, that's, he looks I agree. like a guy that wants to get moved, for sure. I think he doesn't want to play with DeRozan. That's, that's it. Do you think I it's agree. that, or he doesn't want to play for Billy Donovan? Because I think it's maybe, maybe more I think it's that. both. I, I think it could be both. Be, it could be both, yeah. I think DeRozan, like, you know, Zach is the guy that likes to be the guy. So he really didn't like DeRozan coming in. This is all speculation, but it, from what it looks like, he doesn't like having to see DeRozan take those game-winning shots when it could be him. And then, yeah, Billy Donovan benching him is crazy and just made the relationship even worse. Yeah. Yeah, and again, like, we talked about this early, Bernie, with Luca and the Mavs. Like, these dudes hear everything that everybody's talking about. They hear all the speculation, analysis of how bad trades are. Like, we're going to come back to this Vucevic trade for the Bulls in our later segment, but... There's no way they don't think about how awful this team has been managed in certain ways in the last couple of years. Like, it's been really terrible. And one thing for Levine, too, is he's seen some of the worst seasons in Chicago Bulls history the last few years. He had that one season with, um, gosh, who was that awful coach they had for the one year? The big. Oh, uh, Troy Hoy- Hoiberg? Oh, uh, no, no, no. no. Fred, yeah, Fred Hoiberg. Fred he Hoiberg. was terrible. Yeah. But yeah. there was the other guy. Remember his replacement that they almost had like the mutiny of him when he was their coach? I don't remember what his name was. He, he, he'll he never be a coach in the NBA again. I'll find it in a minute. But <laughs> yeah, his team is just so poor. Jim managed. Boylan. Jim Boylan. That is who yep. it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. that is one of the biggest train wrecks of coaching ever in NBA history and it doesn't get talked about, but it was atrocious and Zach Levine was right there in the middle of it. Um, it, the, Yeah, that's why I said this team is the most likely blow it up team in the whole league because they have nothing to build from because they traded all their picks, mm-hmm. don't really have any young players that have a ton of promise other than Io looks pretty solid. It's not like he's going to be a superstar. Um, Patrick Williams at I don't know what's going on with him. I like certain things about him. I was huge on him coming into the draft. I loved what I saw from him in his rookie season at certain points. It just hasn't clicked. Like, it just has not clicked on a night-in, night-out basis. And, again, this is a team that is so out of whack with the timeline. There's no, there's no continuity between any of the ages of their players, what direction they're heading as far as improving. They're they're a train wreck. This is a really bad spot. And I can't help but agree, like, Levine not only looks like he's trying to play his way out of Chicago in a certain way. I don't know if he's just out there tanking to get out of Chicago. But there's no confidence in the infrastructure around him, which has to play a factor in it, too. You know, like, he's shooting with the least confidence I've probably ever seen Zach Levine shoot. Even in seasons where he had worse statistics... He at least looked more confident than he looks right now on a on a nightly basis. So, yeah, they're they're such a train wreck. They should move. And the only bright side is they have a ton of pieces that are individually valuable to other places more than they are to Chicago. So, they they need to start looking because like Caruso, I think Caruso would probably get a first round pick from somebody. Don't you guys think that? Oh, definitely. I think somebody every team trying to win would give you a first round pick for him. Yeah, like Milwaukee would send it. I the Warriors talked about Warriors. The Lakers would send something for him. I, there's a ton of teams that would be interested in him. I think even Lonzo is injured as he is. Somebody would want him. Well, I don't know about of, that. I think I Lonzo's really, cooked food. 
I don't know. I think somebody would take him and just let him sit on the burner back burner for a while and just take as long as you need to get healthy. And if you ever turn out, you turn out. But here's some crazy protected pick for him. You know, I just think there's a ton of stuff they could get. But yeah, they're they're such a disaster. What would be the first thing you guys would even do for that team? Caruso to the Warriors. Yeah, Caruso to the Warriors. <laughs> you would want their pick, just for though. the pick. Just Wouldn't for the pick. The pick. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, no, they that's they need they, they need to do something with this roster. I mean, like, I mean, you Want got I, Lakers, uh, maybe you get those Lakers. I mean, do you trade Zach Levine and, get, and so try I, to? I'm telling you now. You just paid him I, all that money, though. I have fully, I have already accepted deep in my heart that Zach Levine is going to be a New York Nick in the next few months. I just know your, your it's next Nick, <laughs> your, ne- your next your next Nick player. <laughs> is literally going to happen. I just have this feeling of like, there's no way that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, they're going to send three or four first round picks for him and a couple young players. It's going to be a crazy overpay. Chicago is going to have a great, great uh, outlook afterwards. And the New York Knicks will be the New York Knicks. That's just how it's going to go. Uh, I have accepted it and I am prepared for it. <laughs> I'd want to see him on the Mavericks. I feel like that would be a good look that next to Luca. Would be- Sick. That would yeah. be really. That yeah. would be very good for everybody involved. I think. Yeah. yeah Put up some it, numbers with that squad. Mark Cuban just wants to continue this uh, this run. I feel like. But um, Mark Cuban. What a money ball. laundering scheme. That's, that's <laughs> but is. you know, like I think for the Chicago Bulls, I think they need to start like just going back to them. They need to start figuring out what they're going to do now because they need to start asking Zach Levine. They need to start asking. Basically, they just need to start asking Zach Levine. Like, do you still want to be here? Because right now, like the attitude and the numbers that you're putting up are showing that hey, you want to move on and uh, do something else. And even DeRozan too. I know you know DeRozan is obviously playing really well. Um, yeah, it just doesn't matter though. Yeah, like is it time what is he? 34, 33? 34, I think. So yeah, again, that's just really, really. There's no, there's no uh, long term plan with your ages being all over the place like that in terms of team building. Pretty poor. Brad, do you have have another team? I have one more I want to talk about. I do. My team would be the Houston Rockets. Um, Okay. All the way down here? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys watch a lot of them, but, like, I know they're the worst team in the league, but it is even worse than that. Like, they're not even fun to watch. It's like the Magic suck, right? But at least they have Paulo, they have Ball Ball, Jamal Mosley has them playing, you know, some fun basketball. But the Rockets, that team is basically an AAU team. It's like, <laughs> there's, no, there's no structure. Um, like, I feel like I've given Steven Silas a pretty long leash without some slander, so. <laughs> no, it's time, Brad. <laughs> Brad, it is, it is time to do Bro, it. I cannot stand this guy. They have Sengun, who is, you know, an amazing, talented player, and they're trying to build him up to be a cornerstone but his minutes are all out of whack. Like Steven Silas won't even play him consistent minutes. Some, some nights he plays 19, some nights he plays 25, some nights he plays 30. It's crazy. You know, um, he's asking KPJ to be the point guard, but he doesn't put him in positions to be successful as the point guard because he'll put in KPJ, Jalen green, Eric Gordon, and like, bro, he's putting out lineups of Garrison Matthews, Dacian Nix, uh, <laughs> It's, it's garbage, man. It's honestly like Eric Gordon should be off the team at this point so your young guys can develop or, or get a better vet because Eric Gordon doesn't talk. <laughs> um, the, the offense is stagnant. They just stand around and Sangoon, like, I don't know if you guys heard that Jokic quote where he said their offense like stagnant and they should use Sangoon as like a fulcrum to get guys moving and pass yep. in the same way. The Yeah. yeah and so right. he, he would be coaching the team better than Steven Silas because he's literally, right. yeah, he's a hundred percent right. And, but they don't do that. It's just KPJ ISO. I want you to play point guard KPJ, but you're going to ISO every possession or Jalen Green ISO. So it's just, it's literally garbage basketball. Like watching that team hurts my eyes. And I know they should, they should still be bad, but they shouldn't be this bad. They just don't have a true point guard for me. Like there's no, like, there's no one that like kind of sets the tone. I think Sangoon is the closest guy. (laughs) It's kind of that like point forward. Um, and, And that's kind of my frustration with the Rockets watching them and why I have only watched maybe two games of their, of their, maybe Four, actually, I've watched four of their games, but it was four terrible games. I've not been impressed with the Houston Rockets. Um, all been you know, terrible games. Bro. Jabari Smith has been okay, 
but they can't fully unlock the team if they don't really have a, a, a true structure and like really get guys going. And, you know, as much as they have so much talent, like you said, Brad, if it's not, if you can't combine the talent along with the coaching, it's just, it's going to be a, it's going to be a bad time. And you're obviously seeing that right now. I'm, I'm glad you brought them up, Brad, because I was thinking about them recently. And I think in a lot of ways, this situation is pretty parallel to the 76ers trust the process stuff. Okay. And hear me out. All right. It's not a compliment. I don't mean it. I don't mean this in a good way. You have this, this coach and I like Steven Silas way more than I like Brett Brown, but that's probably just like a personality thing. Like I like him as a person <laughs> more than I like Brett Brown. They're both terrible coaches, right? If you're looking at a at, at long term team development, you should realize that he's not the guy that's going to maximize your players in the long term and set them up to be a good team in a few years, right? Yeah. And in a lot of ways, like the 76ers, because I think there'd be people still at this point who would push back and say the process was a good thing. It wasn't a good thing. They have Joel, Joel Embiid, who just happens to be Joel Embiid, right? But look at how the Ben Simmons thing went. Look at how all of the other players that they had come through their doors in the process years in Philly went. Just a revolving door. Yeah. Super poorly because they had no, there was no development of talented players. They're just mm -hmm. talented without any building into long-term career success as far as being a professional basketball player. That is the same thing that's happening in Houston. There's no plan how to develop Jalen Green, how to develop Jabari Smith. Because I would even push back, Bernie. Jabari Smith has been good. He's been legit pretty good. The problem is none of it looks good because they're all playing their own game. There's mm -hmm. like five dudes all running their own, whatever they can do to get the ball and take a shot. That's literally what Houston does every night. I have a strong suspicion, and I hope I'm wrong, and I hope that they rectify this soon. We're going to waste a bunch of these dudes' careers because it is so hard to pull yourself out of bad habits five, six years into your NBA career and then put yourself into really good winning cultures. Like, There's not very many players that can transition out of that and into something better. And most developmental years of their career went so poorly. Like Houston is just so mismanaged. I, I don't get any of it, man. It's honestly, it is to the point where I would say it's career malpractice for some of these kids. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is. <laughs> they're just hurting these kids. Like I, like, I don't know how else to say it. I would, I feel bad. And I would be like, if I was like a parent to one of these kids or you know, a close friend, I would be like, you have to find a way to get out of this town. Get out of here. You're just going to kill yourself of being, you know, hard to fill in player on any other squad in the league. So yeah. really, what did we talk about, Bernie, before the draft with Jalen Green? Wildly talented, going to be a good player. He doesn't pass the ball. He doesn't, he's not that guy. He's going to take a ton of shots. Yeah. put up numbers but it's going to look ugly none of that has been proven and true yeah they had to know that too and why didn't you go get a guard who is actually a point guard <laughs> kevin porter jr is not a guard he's not a point guard he's his turnovers not. hurt me so much he leads the league in turnovers by like a huge margin it's crazy it's shockingly bad fact that nobody's talking about why they don't have a point guard after years of doing this nonsense yeah they're they're a disaster i was honestly thinking like this would be a fun team for uh for old Wembenyama Wemby to come to i pray he doesn't i yeah i just don't want yeah. anybody of talent to go there until they have a different manager a different who even is their general manager who Raphael is Raphael stone he's from seattle oh my god find your way back to seattle bud there's <laughs> there's nothing going good for this team because, like you said, that Jokic quote was shocking because that is true. <laughs> yeah, like Sangoon is the best passer on the team. He's the best uh, like creator. 
that doesn't say much. I mean, he's a great creator for the type of player he is, but that still doesn't say much for the team. They're they're disgusting. They're just yeah. they make me sad. All right, Pete, your last team, and then let's get to the last team, and then we're gonna get to our trade segment. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I was debating. I was gonna talk about Cleveland because I love Cleveland, and I still think <laughs> people are sleeping on them long term. I still like they're to me top four team in the league. Um, most nights they had a little bit of a bad stretch in the last week couple couple dropped games they probably should have won but i would just equate that to some poor offensive outings um but team i wanted to talk about oh man i'm gonna flip the flip the switch on another team with an even worse record than the rockets but i i like a lot of what i've seen from the orlando magic um, even though it's not going well, this is a team I actually would blame some of the injuries on poor record. Uh, the Paolo injury for that those few weeks was pretty tough. Um, and now they don't have Wendell Carter Jr. again, another pretty integral part of their team. I, I like the individual. This is a good example of developing your players. Like We're seeing these kids get better most nights. And even when they don't win, they're 5-19. and 19, still positive things that you can take from it and you know, bull bull is the one that everybody's talking about it's shocking how good bull bull has become just an impressive player all around um there's so much to be happy with on the team The jamal mosley puts his guys most nights into a position to succeed and it's it's kind of the anti houston where you can still be terrible be one of the worst teams in the league, but show growth on a on a nightly basis. So, I really mm-hmm. just wanted to shout them out. A quick one. We don't need to dive too deep into them. You guys can, you know, whatever you think about Orlando. I'm curious, but this is a positive tank job if there was one, in my opinion, this season. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, like when it comes to the Orlando Magic, um, obviously, you know, I think losing is probably their. This is going to happen a little bit more often than not because they have such a young team. They obviously have young players and they're going to be very inexperienced in those kind of clutch and pressure moments and situations. I know that they have some some good talent there, which makes me think that they should start looking to trade guys like Terrence Ross. I think that that's something that 100%. they should definitely look into. Um, Lakers, Lakers, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony, I'd move. I'd just move a bunch of their guards. I don't think any of those guards are long term guys for them. Other than Suggs, Suggs I'd, I'd okay, keep Suggs. Yeah. Sucks. I mean, R- RJ Hampton, like th- those summer league games Frozen. still haunt me to this day. Like I still remember them vividly of him just taking some crazy shots. Oh my um, gosh. He's, he's frustrating. To and me. so um, he's a guy that I'm like a little, just like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe someone to move off of, but um, I think the magic will be just fine. I think, like you said, Pete, they, they are a team that is starting to develop, starting to grow and, you know, really emphasizing their culture and is a fun team to watch. Obviously, like you said, the injuries played a huge factor into it. You know, your number one option who's a rookie gets hurt, and that's just uh, the unfortunate part about injuries in the league. Uh, but I'm excited to see where this team goes moving forward with Paulo kind of getting back into uh, healthiness and also um, seeing what Franz Wagner can do with him and also Bobol and seeing if, like, let's see if Bobol can become uh, a huge, like, X-factor piece for the Orlando Magic coming in the near future. I'm excited for this team. Yeah, there's so much fun to watch. I watch every single game just because of the way they play. You know, they're up and down. They play defense and they're long. Um, they they are a completely different team without Wendell Carter Jr. Though, like they He's on both ends, very important. He anchors their defense and he opens up their offense with his shooting and his underrated passing. Um, I would say though, I would say if I was the Magic, I would move Jonathan Isaac. Cole Bamba. Anthony, Bomba, yeah, ba- free Bomba. Bomba's actually a yeah. good player. Yeah, and... He needs to go to a team. That's a Lakers player right there. <laughs> yeah. they, could use, they could use him. If any team was really smart, too, the, the Nets would look at Bomba, too. He would be so Oh, my good God. They need him. They should just throw the pick for him, honestly. Give it to him. He'd be perfect yeah. for their team. He can shoot. He can play defense. He's He is honestly probably the biggest disservice of any player on their team right now. But it's just because they have so many big men. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I love the Magic. Fun team to watch. Yeah, Houston should uh, take a page out of their notebook. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. I agree. We'll see what happens. Um, but people, let us know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of the power rankings? 
Do you guys agree with our uh, statements that we've said about a couple of these teams? I know that there's a lot more teams that we could have talked about. Obviously, you know, the Celtics are number one. We could have talked about them. But it's kind of fun talking about the teams that don't normally get talked about, like the Orlando Magic, uh, like the Houston Rockets, like the La- – well, Lakers actually get talked about a lot. Um, Chicago is another team. Um, and the Hawks, obviously, as well. So let us know in the comment section down below. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? Do you agree with our assessment of these teams? Let us know in the comment section down below. And also remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Again, all this stuff helps out the algorithm of the charge and lets you guys know that you enjoy watching us on a night and night out basis and enjoy our takes. So uh, please continuing to hit that like, share, and subscribe button.